have 15 minutes. I have a lot to say. No. Um, what I thought is yesterday I actually had a, a uh, meeting, a little tea, one-on-one -on -one with Sally. And the first thing we always ask, or most of us are curious about, is how did you get to be who you are? So I thought mm. that I wanted to kind of explain that to you guys, especially. Um, so how did I get here? Um, I started, I want to do this really quickly because I have so little time. Um, when I was a kid, I was sure I was going to do biomedical engineering, which was, I mean, since I was five years old, I was obsessed and passionate about getting people that were in wheelchairs um, to be able to actually go up staircases. Um, my best friend as a five-year-old had these awful looking um, braces on her feet, and it was like, why are tennis shoes so awesome and cool, and those braces are so ugly? Why can't we make cool braces, you know? And so I was always wanting to create these cool things for people that had handicaps. And so I started wanting to be a biomedical engineer, and I did one year of it, which is actually a combination of medicine and engineering. And after one year, um, I decided that I passionately hated electrical engineering. <laughs> it was like, there is no way I am specializing this. This is the most boring, mm -hmm. and you know exactly if your light bulb is going to turn on if you do everything right. And so I was like, crisis, crisis, I don't know what to do. And someone told me to go into architecture because I could design, you know, infinitely. And so I just grabbed it. And I ended up grabbing it for 18 years. Even while I was doing the career, I thought, oh, I made a mistake again. But my mom said, you can't keep quitting what you do, you know. So I stayed in it for 18 years. I ended up actually building airport terminals um, all over Europe. I built in Madrid, Spain, in Warsaw, Poland. I was about to quit. I was like, I'm done with this. I need to do something human. I got into coaching. And then, of course, life said, are you sure? And gave me Heathrow Terminal and said, you don't want to do this one? You know. <laughs> and of course, temptation, I did it for another two and a half years. Even while I was doing it, I was like, oh, really? Okay, I'll just this is the last one. And then after two and a half years, my mom died in a car accident. And at first I was, you know, it was quite shocking. And I went to where she was. She was living in Spain, so I was there for two weeks organizing, and you know, there was a lot to do. It's very unexpected, of course. And um, <laughs> During that time, actually, I had like kept getting downloads of what you know that she was done, you know what had happened in her life, how, what she had completed, which was very strange. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, poor you," and I'm like, "I'm fine, actually. I'm fine. You know, I'm in, I'm in you know trauma, but I was actually okay." When I returned back to my office in London and I sat down, that kind of voice that was with me those two weeks said, you know, really lovingly, no judgment, said, "Eva, this isn't your legacy." And it was like, oh, shoot. I knew it, you know. And so two weeks later, I, I requested, I said I wanted to quit. Because of my responsibility, I was the director of the architectural team doing the construction, I was required by contract to stay four more months. So since then, I have been searching for this legacy. And I began uh, by studying transfer, uh, transpersonal psychology on my own. I just took every single curriculum of any uh, university, every book that's required by them, conferences, to figure out who the hell was that voice, you know? <laughs> and then, because I was like, there's something inside that has this, you know, very, very clear, you know, where you're supposed to be going. I studied into that, then I got into hypnosis, I got into neurolinguistic programming, I was just having a ball learning all this stuff. And then something practical kind of kicked in and said, Eva, you got to kind of, you know, do something. You need to do something professionally. You can't just, you know, enjoy reading and studying all the time. So I decided to go into medical. I actually had a bit of a, a body crisis and through a very long massage <coughs> with a friend, all my dreams of when I was five years old came back. And I thought, oh, the medical. I forgot the medical component. So interesting enough, my mom's a medical librarian. I, you know, worked in a hospital all the time. My dad has been in hospitals in and out since, you know, I was about 13. So for me, a hospital is my backyard. So I was like, oh, okay, let's mix the two. So I began doing the medical hypnotherapy. I started studying anything and everything out there. And when I was doing it, I discovered just how powerful this stuff is, for example, for allergies. Like in one session, you can remove an allergy. 
And it was like, wait a minute, this isn't psychosomatic, this isn't pain management or, or positive thinking. We're actually physically making changes in the body. So I thought, what can I do you know, that would really make a difference so that people know that this stuff works and it's not just for pain management and stuff. And I was probably a month just like, well, maybe I do arthritis, it's not immune. I could probably figure out how to put the allergy process into arthritis. Maybe lupus or, yeah, I don't know that many people with lupus. I don't know anybody with lupus. And so I'm thinking, and the voice comes back, you know. I have a very succinct voice. It doesn't say much. And it said, MS. And I said, what the hell is MS? And then I look up, oh, it's multiple sclerosis. And I'm like, isn't that something about your back, you know? It's like, no, I don't want pain management. Do you not understand? I do not want pain management. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, why did I get the word MS? And of course I start investigating it further and I realize, oh, it's an autoimmune disease. And then I realize further, oh, I get to work with people in wheelchairs again. Mm -hmm. And then I decide, oh, yeah, I'm taking this one on. So I spent two years, I worked with 24 volunteers with MS. Um, to see if I can shift MS in the same ways you can shift an allergy. Um, I took any other class I could. Anybody who said they knew something about autoimmune with hypnosis, with voice dialogue, with NLP, with therapy, I took their class. And I always talked about my project. And over and over, people and teachers and clients would come to say, I know someone who healed their MS through this work. And I would contact the therapist, I would contact the client, I would interview them, what did you do? And I did this project for two years. 15 people completed with me for nine months. Of those 50 people, 15 people, um, pain went down 50%, um, disability went down 30%, people with crutches were no longer using the crutches. I didn't get the success of allergies yet. Um, though now I can say I do have one of my MS clients now, which I still work privately with them, has completely, is completely symptom free. And like a couple weeks ago she calls me, she goes, they're all on, my symptoms are all on. And I'm like, oh, what am I getting into? And I called her and it was, she was having a life crisis, you know, it's like mm. one of those things you don't want to do in public when everybody knows you, she did one of those things, you know, alcohol included. And so of course she was like, you know, and of course she was like, my life is over, everybody saw me, and I think it's on film, you know. So, you know, of course, all the same, you know, so we slowly walked her back out of it, and I thought, I got it, I got it, you know. So since I finished the project, uh, the MS project, a little more than a year ago, I've continued to work with people with MS, with lupus, psoriasis, warts, a lot of people with IBS, panic attacks. Um, and allergies. And allergies, of course. I love allergies. Um, <laughs> interesting. I love MS. If you know, if someone calls me with MS, I'm like, yeah, I have another MS <laughs> You know, because like it's my it's my background. You know, um, and I I guess I don't know how much time I have left. You can yeah. eight twenty. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so what I discovered, and the, the key component is your subconscious is in charge of balancing your conscious mind. When your conscious mind is not balanced, your subconscious will put events in your life and diseases in your life to help you and motivate you to make those corrections. The problem becomes more uncomfortable than where you are, because if it doesn't become more uncomfortable, you will not make the change. And so what I work with my clients is, in the hypnosis sessions, in the voice, you know, parts work, in the neurolinguistic programming, in NLP, we find out what is the subconscious wanting to correct? What is the subconscious balancing? And actually, it's a very homeopathic way of working. The disease is actually creating a temporary balance. So we don't want to get rid of the disease or something else is going to have to balance you out. What we do is create what is it doing and then we bring that into the mental into the psychological into the lifestyle to create that balance in a higher neurological level once we create that balance in your life again the disease is obsolete the subconscious doesn't need to do that task anymore and in most cases the symptoms go away so that's the main work i've done
And in the last year, every time I describe this, I'm hoping someone will say, oh, I've got someone who has a mess, you know. But they don't. They keep saying, oh, where can I learn to do that? And I'm like, oh, I thought I was at one school. There's about 20 composition. And then I discovered this, and then I actually added this philosophy. And in this last <clears throat> month, life kept pushing me a bit. And I finally said, OK. And so at the end of this summer, I will experiment with the pilot program to teach what I do. So any questions? Can you go back to like an allergy and why your body creates it, how you can get rid of it? Just the, yeah. The so, an, OK, so your immune system is the seat of your personality. If there's any conflict in your personality, your immune system is going to reflect it. If uh, there's any stress, the immune system is going to feel it. In the case of an allergy, there are several things that influence it. Um, usually allergies are formed in moments in your life in which, A, you're either in a lot of stress or you're actually having a very a, a tr life transition from being single to being married, from being a student to being an adult, for example, to being a child to being an adult, moving, for example, will also create, it's a change in identity. I'm no longer a New Yorker, I'm a Santa Cruiser. In those moments, your immune system is actually like, okay, what's going on? There's a big change. There's a big change. Or when there's stress, your immune system is going to be like, what is creating this stress? And it might be, for example, you're having an argument with your boyfriend while having a dinner out. And you're like, God, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe it. And as you're in this, all this stress, your body is like, it does, it's like, what is causing this stress? And it will look for it because it, it wants to keep you safe. So it wants to keep you away from stress. So if in that moment that you're having a discussion, you have a piece of shrimp that isn't quite right, that's a little off, and it gets you sick, the next time you're anywhere close to the shrimp, your body will be like, that's what caused it. That's what causes stress. And all it's doing is keeping you away from it. That's all an allergy does is, it, if, if you're allergic to it, you will stay clear of it. I've had cat allergies that were formed actually after divorce and the wife kept the cats. And then the next time the, you know, the, next time the, the ex-husband sees a cat, the whole body's like, divorce, you know, and he can never be anywhere near a cat. So these are, this is one of the ways that allergies are formed. And how I work with them is I actually, because your immune system is always eavesdropping to find out you know, what's going on and you know, is it safe, I actually have you envision and walk yourself out of that allergy reassociate the cat to when you were 15 or, you know, and walk out of that divorce period. Just take it completely out of that argument or out of that divorce. Like the serious allergies with EpiPens and all that? <coughs> yeah. So this person who had the cat allergy, for example, yeah. with the divorce, he couldn't go to the movies because if anybody has a jacket that has cat, any mm -hmm. cat hairs on it, he was constantly with an, you know, an inhaler. And I mean, he was my first client. He was my first, he was my practice, you know, was, was a friend. He was like, yeah, let's do it on me. I didn't realize how bad he was. I didn't realize how serious. Next, you know, if anyone is that serious, we don't test it. You know, I'll have him actually go, you know, to his doctor and get it tested, you know, normally. With him, it was right after the session. We did one session. We we're like, should we try it? And he was like, yeah, I think this worked. And five minutes later, we went outside and Lo and behold, life is like it is. There was a Persian cat outside. Don't ask me why. He's like, oh, that cat lives on the other street, you know. But the Persian cat came, sat down with us, and he petted it for half an hour. And he's like, I haven't pet a cat in 35 years. And nothing happened. It was five minutes later. Wow. <laughs> That's when I was like, God, if I could do this, what can I do? <laughs> do, you, do you have people that like, just won't fall under hypnosis? Or what do you do? Like, so because I have so many tools in the toolbox, um, people that are very much uh, like very scientific or very like this, um, I won't, you, we'll try the hypnosis if the hypnosis doesn't work. Just because they're, they're, they're trying to analyze the whole thing, I'll use neuro linguistic programming. I'll use part work. You know, I'll say, well, go sit over there as the allergy. And he's like, what? No, sit over there and say, I am the allergy. And then we talk to that part. I, so I'll use a lot of different tools depending on the person in front of me and depending on what we're wanting to shift. So cool. Really, really That's cool. time. Excellent. <laughs>